Imagine that all diabetics on insulin wouldn't have to suffer with the painful shots anymore. All they have to do is to inhale the insulin in. Is it possible? Well, to answer this question, be close and keep watching this video. To answer the question of whether we can have an inhalable insulin or not, we have to dive a bit into physical pharmaceutics. Well, it's a branch of pharmaceutics as we said earlier, and the definition of this science is very logical if we break the term into the two words composing it. Knowing and applying the physical and chemical principles to the design and manufacture of dosage forms, or in other words, pharmaceutics, is a very genuine practice of physical pharmaceutics. This science is quite important and covers various aspects from the very beginning of medicine's life story to the very, very end. One of the topics this science is strongly bonded to is the physical chemical properties of drug substances. If there is a substance that is required to be incorporated into a dosage form, the first thing to consider is to study various physical and chemical properties, physical chemical properties of that substance. Properties like solubility in different solvents is a very basic and important thing to consider. The substance in solution and its kinetic, dynamic and osmotic behavior in solution in addition to partitioning and the distribution of that substance between immiscible liquids are indeed important things to study as well. Also, whether this entity would be adversely affected by oxygen, water or light, I mean would it be subjected to oxidation, hydrolysis or photodegradation respectively is also something to encounter. There are other physical chemical properties and as the one mentioned all are based or related to core physics and chemistry principles but for medicinal agent. The second aspect in which physical pharmaceutics is involved in is the stability of formulation. By knowing the properties of the medicinal agent and the various additives in a certain formulation, we can make a rational selection of which excipients to include and which to exclude. A very basic example would be having a negatively charged drug substance and a positively charged excipient. Having opposite charged entities in such close proximity would oppose the potential of chemical interaction under specific conditions, and that kind of hazard wouldn't be favorable, especially if it affects the effectiveness or the safety of the medicinal product. Physical pharmaceutics also aids in constructing logical interpretation of formulation's behavior. Suppose we have these two suspension formulations for the same drug substance but with different excipients. Looking at these images wouldn't make any sense without knowing some basic physical and chemical principles of sedimentation, flocculation, interaction in solution and surface electrochemistry. If we have a very good command of these aspects we would easily and again rationally substitute the various additives till we get a very satisfying formulation. Thus, we can say also that physical pharmaceutics helps in selecting alternative approaches based on the data presented. If we are happy with a certain formulation, we have to make sure that this formulation would present the drug into the target area and the drug would impart its action in a very reproducible and specific manner. For that, we perform in vitro drug assessment. C 
Some of these tests are listed down below, but rest assured that we will be discussing this in much details in some of the future videos. The point here is physical pharmaceutics is also a part of this test. Yes, you're right. This is the same picture we showed earlier when we asked that question. Well, you are about to know the answer, but I bet now you are aware that it's very complicated to consider changing the route of administration and formulating a specific substance in a specific form. And for insulin, there have been and there are inhalable forms out there. And despite any clinical concerns, we can say that physical pharmaceutics came largely into play in achieving the transformation of injectable form into an inhalable one. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here is a recap of what has been said. You can take a screenshot and look at it later. Don't forget to share your comments down below and continue learning through Dr. Siddiqui. Stay fabulous whenever you are.